With us now, Ria Reese and Andre Chevry. Welcome. Hi, thank Hi. you. Hi. So you are here as part of the East Coast Music Awards Showcase with regard to Rogers Television, but it's been a bit of a ride to become an East Coast band, if you will. <laughs> yes. How is it that a Montreal, Toronto gal finds herself with a Moncton guy, <laughs> right? How does that happen that the band finds themselves here in Atlantic Canada? Well, I mean, I was born and raised in Toronto and I've had many, many a careers, <laughs> which helped me travel the world as well as throughout Canada. And I found Montreal enticing, so I moved to Montreal and on my journeys, I met this fella uh, here me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in Montreal, yeah. a Moncton boy who's also going to Montreal. And we started our band together and uh, got music going and in the blues and started really exploring things. And then an uh, event happened called uh, COVID and <laughs> right. we decided to take a trip out east to where he's from and we're here and we've just become East Coast musicians. Yeah. I mean, we, we visited before, for sure. Right. We, we made the move after the pandemic, or during the pandemic more. Right. Yeah. So finding each other as part of the Montreal culture, and you know, Montreal's a dynamic and exciting, culturally rich yeah. city, and it has certainly its own vibe. Yeah. Um, how does that compare to coming to the East Coast? Because we are certainly I'm not to say we're not cosmopolitan, but we certainly are, we pride ourselves on being salt of the earth, you know, keeping it real kind of uh, uh, vibe. So how's that working out? I, I like the, I like to call it the laid back earnest vibe. It's slightly, uh, you know, like in a contrast, but it seems to fit, it complements really well together. Laid back, but very earnest in, in the, in how people are here. And I, I'm drawn to that. We take our music seriously. Very seriously. Yeah. Very seriously. Yeah. Yeah, it is, it's in the DNA. Yeah. And, and live music is, is a thing, you know, yeah. like uh, the support for live musicians and musicians who, who play actually real instruments. The metropolitan area has like a lot of DJs and, and electronic music, which I'm sure there's some of that in the East Coast, but it seems to be the East Coast embraces more, you know, live music, uh, guitars, drums, and bass, or, you know, that's, that's great. That's great for us anyways. <laughs> yeah. yeah, And that's because your music is, I'm sure, enjoyable via Zoom during COVID, but it is probably absolutely best experience live. Live act. We are de most definitely a live act. We enjoy being a live act. We enjoy seeing people get up and dance. We like people, even if they want to sit down and just absorb it all in, I get a lot of energy from being around people. Just seeing people and touching people or whatever so uh, it, it's it's a learning curve I'm learning the online pro, uh, promotion of music but live will always stay right centered into my heart it will and so much so for the fans yeah I mean, right <laughs> I mean it is I'd love to be face to face yeah, like, it's that transfer of energy yeah. right from a live uh, experience yeah. so that me bringing to that now uh, you had an album release uh, a few years ago lots of great success toured with it critical acclaim and now you're on to new a new album yes yeah, um, this will be actually our third release yeah. and uh, it's the follow-up to our second release which was released in 2015 2015 yeah. yes yeah. it was called out all night and this one is called the morning after <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it has so many levels to it. Choose which one you want. <laughs> but the title is just choose choose whichever thought pattern you want to take with that album. Right. And yeah. uh, it was an experience. It's a kind of pre and mid COVID project because we took songs that were sitting in sitting in the drawer, kind of like okay, well. We could pull this one out, like revamping, because now the situation has changed, and we could really put a new energy into a new song, into an older song, and some new songs. One of which we'll be performing today is like directly into what is going on and how it's affecting us. And a lot of musicians are doing that, and I'm so kind of jazzed to be a, at least getting some of that energy out, out there. So yeah. But how, how has COVID, you know, adjusted? your 
uh, thought process, the creative process. I mean, it has affected everybody, I believe, on a molecular level. <laughs> right? It's like so, we yeah. are all. There is, I don't know how anybody could, could talk about the last couple of years and not be uh, a, a bit emotional and a bit impacted by it. But certainly, creatively speaking, uh, not being able to tour and then being a human being and processing it, how it, is it informing your music and your creativity? Well, Nicole, it is, uh, if I have to be completely honest, it, it's, a pro it's really a process and I'm not sure I'm through it yet. <laughs> but, um, musically, it, it kind of started to create things, but also it pulled a lot of things out of me. Like, a, a, a little right. here and a little there. Like, it's a whole ball, it discombobulated a whole, I won't, don't want to say the word I want to say, but it's a very uh, emotionally chaotic. Right, yeah. and so unraveling and bunching yeah, at the same so time. Like, yeah, a lot of tension, a lot of anxiety, and it did come out in the music, but at the same time, I was able to put a lot of feeling into it, mm -hmm. and he was a lot, able to put a lot of yeah. feeling into it, and then we were also not able to put things into it because it's like emotionally draining from the world, right. so you kind of lack some of that energy in the music. Right. So it, it's... It's a process. Yeah. Mm. It's, a pro it's an evolution, <laughs> Waves, right? We will, we will see this and experience it in the, in the rear view mirror at some point. Yeah, and in five years, I might still be talking about this. <laughs> you, know, you never know. Maybe. You never know. Right? We, or, we, forget, we forget quickly, I think, uh, as a society. So <laughs> hopefully we'll forget this one Hopefully really we, will, we will adapt. Yes, we, we will adapt, adapt yes, creatively. Yeah. 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 But how does it feel to be back in action? Oh my God, yes, yeah, feels so good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Therapeutic, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Cathartic. Yeah. It, it's uh, yeah. exciting. It's it feels like you've been in a desert and you finally get a sip of water. It does that feel like first that. First yeah. totally sip like that, yeah. of water. That's how it feels. Wow. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Right. Give me goosebumps. I'm not sure when the last time we performed, like in front of a, a crowd, a like live a audience. Crowd. I'm trying to remember, and I can't even remember <laughs> right. uh, when we uh, yeah. the last time we did a, like a yeah, large crowd uh, like it, that. It, so, anyways, <laughs> it's great. It's been yeah. Long. Yeah. We performed yesterday for the East Coast Music Awards yeah, showcase, and yeah. yeah, it was brilliant. Right. And of course, we are staring at the barrel of the East Coast Music Awards coming to Halifax in 2023, yeah. the 35th anniversary. Yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. yeah. And Sounds exciting. We'll see what that means for Rhea Reese and Band. Well, I don't well, like to believe in endings. I only like to believe in beginnings, and this is my first. That's right. And you found your home now in, yeah. out in, in the East Coast music yeah. community. So uh, that's wonderful. It's, a, it's great to have you with us. So to that end, let's talk about this song you are going to perform. Yes, it's called Long Way to Sunday. And I mean, Sundays. I see Sundays as a day of uh, hope, of relaxation, so whatever you choose to believe or not believe people usually tend to associate sundays with either preparing or being with family or friends or just taking it easy feeling good and uh, for the past two years and how many months two months two and a half months <laughs> i've been counting <laughs> we've been a long way from that and so this song is basically talking about those feelings how far it is from feeling good feeling together feeling normal feeling prepared Feeling. <laughs> it's feeling and not feeling. Yeah. Right? So a long way from Sunday is kind of how I've been adjusting to this whole situation. That's how it's felt. Like a long way from it. Wonderful. I cannot wait to hear it. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Andre. Thank, Thank you. you, Nicole. Hey. Yeah, these are hard and weird. Journey of a lifetime After the road ends the same of goodbyes Don't look for me, don't ask me to try Lemonade be whispered In lullabies Stayed up all night Back and for tomorrow But stuck in the fog of tonight Because a long way to Sunday And I'm trying to get there today Long way to Sunday And I can't find you any other way Have you ever thought you'd see a rainbow? 
crashing of the sea, watching the storms glowing at night, wistfully thinking about last night, watching my world crumble all around me. It's like I'm looking for love that lasts longer than life, but hating what you find at the end of the line. It's a long, long way, way to Sunday. Sunday, and I'm trying to get there today. Long way to Sunday, and I can't find you any other way. Now we say welcome to Garrett Taylor and Elise Aaron. Welcome. Hi. So you are here. We, it's an opportunity for us to get to know you, your history, your story, your coupledom. So we're going to cover on a whole bunch of topics in our little bit of time here. Let's start with the fact that you are Kay Breitner's. Yeah. Yeah. And being Kay Breitner's, it is a musical pedigree unlike others. How does that shape your music and how does that influence uh, the dynamic of performance? Well, um, there's no fiddle. <laughs> don't, uh, don't hold that against us. <laughs> but uh, I would say it influences our performance and its energy. I Big think time. Kate Bretners love to have a lot of energy in their live shows when they come out to see us, whether we're mm -hmm. at the bar or whether we're in a theater. Um, we definitely bring that Kate Breton energy, so lots of fun. Great jokes, sometimes bad jokes, but it's always a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that because music is so deeply embedded in the DNA of the land that is Cape Breton, that it, it gives you an innate confidence and natural ability to entertain? Because it's everywhere. It's pervasive in Cape Breton. It certainly helps. It just, uh, you kind of want to make it, make your kitchen party, I guess, for a, yeah, it's something where people find uh, common ground and comfort, and it's something that you know everybody loves. So it's like a big family in the room. You know yeah, I mean? it's 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 very easy to to make people feel like they know you and like you know them as soon as you someone picks up a guitar and starts playing a song. Right. A lot of it's it's. I would think it makes for immediate ability to collaborate mm -hmm. and connect and connect, yeah. but not just with each other, but then if you choose to collaborate with other musicians and different genres, that you have that flexibility because it's something that you know you grow up with. Yeah, Certainly. absolutely. Yeah. So you are working on an album? Yes. 
Do you want to talk about the album? Yeah, absolutely. So we've released two songs now that uh, originally the album was kind of a long-term dream and I didn't think that these songs would make it to the album, but we just put some plans together and decided that those two songs, Bittersweet High and Wildcard, Wildcard uh, would be the newest release at that time, um, will be the first singles followed by a few more. And uh, the album doesn't have a defined name yet, but uh, about 10 to 12 songs that will be on that and expecting a spring release. Is the, it, how, would, how would you describe the album to somebody? Say, for example, we're going to hear your, your, a song from you. Yeah. But if you want to express to somebody what it is that they can expect from the album, what is it? How do you define your music? I would say I've been working on defining the music, which is very difficult to do, as I'm sure you know, I've been interviewing a few artists, but uh, I describe it as being very rock and roll influenced, um, but with a, a 90s edge, because I have a lot of classic rock influences like Fleetwood Mac and the Eagles, and we love the Rolling Stones, obviously. <laughs> we didn't plan this. We did not plan this. But uh, <laughs> I'm constantly told that there's a, a 90s sound in my voice and in the way our music comes together. Um, I was recently described as the Americana Alanis Morissette, and I'll, I'll take that. I like that. But, uh, but I can see that now that people have been kind of expressing that back to me, how they're receiving my sound, and, and I can see it, yeah. Yeah. So the, you can expect that on the album, there's um, just the way that we arrange things and the way that the songs come forward. Uh, Garrett's guitar tones uh, definitely reflect that kind of alternative rock era from the 90s, but it, kinda, it just it is what it is. You know, you can't help it. You, it's, it's inside and it wants to come out and that's what it sounds like. Right. <laughs> now you're a couple. Yeah. yeah. So you write songs, you perform together. How does that work? How do you have the boundary between, okay, we're making music and we're creating right now and then we are just going to be us? Or is it a constant, is that, is there, is there no boundary? I think we do absolutely everything together. So we do. It's, I don't know if it ever turns off or on. I think it's just, like you said, a constant yeah. energy. Yeah. Right. And it does have that, does have its challenges though. Sometimes we wish that we would just be able to turn off our brain and relax and watch some TV or, <laughs> you know, do something that we used to do before we were pursuing music so yeah. intensely. But when we have the time, all we want to do is spend it on music. So, yeah. 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 Because or riding motorcycles. Or that. We do that. <laughs> that is one thing we do together that is not yeah. music and is a lot of fun. Yeah. It is. is that going to be in a video? I hope so. Yeah, we got to make that happen. We do. <laughs> Wearing those t-shirts too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, that should be part of it. Um, yeah, and I asked that question because um, it is a business as much as it is a creative dream and pursuit and passion. And, you know, turning that off as individuals is tough because there's so much yeah. hustle. I, I don't think there is anything tougher and more resilient than an East Coast artist because the hustle is never ending it's true so as a couple i would think that's especially challenging that you uh, find that balance it is challenging but i think we're both very driven people and this is something we've both always dreamed about pursuing but we didn't give ourselves the opportunity and when we got together i mean we were together as artists before we were together as a couple and we just decided why not like if not now then when let's do right. it and now we're just I guess we feel like it's a, a gift to be able to do it and we feel very fortunate and mm -hmm. it's it doesn't feel like work when it's so much fun and it's so rewarding it should be fun for yeah. sure yeah. yeah if you're not having fun why are you doing it exactly yeah. Yeah. if you're having fun then your fans will have fun yeah absolutely 100 percent. yeah so when it comes to the next many months you are going to be finalizing the album and then planning some touring how's that going to work uh, now that things are quote open Right. We hope <laughs> that's everybody uses that phrase. We hope. <laughs> Are you um, expecting uh, uh, to extend past the Maritimes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, a lot of groundwork was laid in early 2022 when things did start opening up. I knew that if I wanted to be putting an album out and getting that music to people, I would need to start thinking about that like a year to 16 months in advance, which is crazy, but it's true. Um, so looking at making connections, ECMA was an amazing opportunity for that to connect with festival bookers and even other artists to make connections and kind of help us 
can't know because we haven't played a whole lot outside of the province. Um, but I think the album will be a big catalyst for getting for getting it out there. So building connections, building our network, um, just playing the music as much as we can. And we're looking at uh, possible dates in Ontario for the summer, um, looking at branching out into Nashville and making some connections there. And yeah. Go Nashville does appear to be the Mecca. It's absolutely. Yeah. So mm. we've got some friends there now and we're ready to go wherever the music will take us. And if people want to reach out to you, what is the best um, place? Would it be YouTube? You know, where I want to find out more about what you're doing. Uh, I would say my website, which links out to everything. So EliseAaron.com and all the links to socials are there. So I'm most active on Instagram, but also Facebook and more recently TikTok. Weird, but I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> Spotify and iTunes for music, but also on YouTube and really wherever people stream, but those are the sites I'm most active on. Fantastic. And the song you're going to perform for us, tell us about it. The song is called Wild Card. Garrett and I wrote it together. Mm -hmm. So when uh, when we first linked up as artists, I had been writing solo, um, but Garrett came in and brought some incredible guitar writing and as well as lyrics for that one. Mm -hmm. So it's a little extra special because we did that one together. So we love to play it together and it's about taking a chance. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Garrett, Elise, Thank good you. luck. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us.